If you import footage into your timeline by selecting a clip, dragging and dropping and letting go, stop doing that. There is a much faster way. All we have to do is press Shift, Fn and F12, and it puts it nice and neat at the end of the timeline in one move. Now that is just one shortcut. And in this video, I'll be covering nine and a half more that is going to radically speed up your editing workflow. You gotta just press record. Hey, welcome back to Think Media, Nate here. Now, before we dive into the video, I do wanna explain what keyboard shortcuts are. They simply allow you to perform an action or function on your editing program with a press of a key. So for example, if I want to make a cut, I could switch to the blade tool, pressing B, and then perform a cut or I could press Command B and it performs that keyboard shortcut for me, which will cut the video in half. So that's basically the gist of keyboard shortcuts and those few seconds save definitely add up over the course of an edit and saves you a bunch of time. Now I'll be using DaVinci Resolve for this video. However, most of these keyboard shortcuts work in Adobe Premiere as well as in Final Cut. With that out of the way, let's dive into our first keyboard shortcut. So oftentimes when you're editing, you just simply pull up a clip. Let's say I want this as B-roll of this guy casting a net, but I only want a portion of this clip in my timeline. I don't want the whole thing. So what you would traditionally do, let's say is I want to start right here. I would bring this in point, put it there, and then I'll take this out point. And once it's done, bring it in there. And then I click in the middle, drag, and then drop it into the timeline. So it's a little bit slow and we can definitely speed this up. So what I'm gonna do is just click on this clip again, reset my in and out points. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrub through the timeline. Once I find him casting it, I'm gonna press I on the keyboard and that's gonna set the end point for me. Once it's over, press the O point. Now you can click and drag and drop again, or what you could do is click the F in button and press the F9. And that's going to place it right in the middle wherever your playhead is. But I actually want to place it on the end of my timeline. So I'm gonna press this F in, Shift, F12, and boom, it does that for me. And I don't have to mess around trying to get it in the perfect alignment. So definitely once you get used to that, it can really speed up your edits and you can quickly go through here, start placing different B-roll, boom, boom, boom so quick. This next shortcut is going to help us navigate our timeline. So here I actually have a bunch of different clips, but I can't actually see my whole video in one field of view. So traditionally what you could do is click on this minus or plus button or just drag it and you can actually see your whole video. You have to get appropriate and move it over. Or if you want to use a keyboard shortcut, press command and the plus button to dive in or to zoom out. So you can get really granular. I can just quickly tap that a few times to zoom in and zoom back out. But one thing you want to do is say, let's say you are zoomed in and you just quickly want to go back to see your whole timeline. You can actually click Shift Z. And so now I can see my whole entire timeline in one field of view. And if you want to dive back in to zoom in, all you gotta do again, press Shift Z and you can toggle back and forth. So this is a great way if you want to quickly zoom in and adjust a few frames or zoom back out to see your whole project. Now the tool that I use 90% of the time when I'm editing the video is the blade tool, which you can find right here. Now to perform a cut, traditionally you'd have to click that, wherever your playhead is, where you want it to start, and then click it to perform a cut. However, with a shortcut, there is a much faster way. All we have to do is we can actually just press the B tool to bring up the blade so we don't have to click on that. Or better yet, just press Command B and wherever your playhead is, it will perform a cut. So this is a lot faster once I wanna make a cut, I just press Command B, Command B, and I perform two cuts a lot quicker. Now let's say I actually want to delete both of these clips on either side and I only want the section in the middle. Well, I could go over, press delete, and then delete that gap. However, that takes quite a bit of time. Instead, when we're performing a cut, all we have to do is click Shift Command and the bracket, and that will cut everything from the beginning up to that point. And the same thing, once it starts and finishes, Command Shift and then the end bracket. And with that, you can see how quickly it is to cut the beginning of a clip as well as the end. 
This next keyboard shortcut is going to come in handy, especially if you want to quickly preview your video instead of playing your video back at normal 1x speed like so, just by pressing the space bar, you can actually press the L key to watch things in 2x speed or press again to watch it in 4x speed. The same applies to the reverse. If you hit the J key, you can reverse your video and press it again for a faster reverse. And so this quickly allows you to preview your video but if you actually want to slow things down, you can actually use the arrow keys to go by one frame or press the shift button to go by 10 frames. And so this is really helpful if you want to dive into a specific part of your video and then make a cut like so. So I use this tool all the time, especially if I'm reviewing long talking sessions, I just wanna quickly preview my video and make sure everything is looking good. Now, if you edit a lot of talking head videos and want to quickly get a rough cut of your video, I find this process to be one of the most tedious parts of making a video. You can actually speed up with this next shortcut, which is actually today's sponsor, Gling. Gling allows you to upload your talking head A-roll and it's going to automatically remove silences, filler words, and even bad takes. And this will give you a nice rough cut in a matter of a few minutes. This honestly saves me so much time on each video. I can just step out, let it process, and by the time I come back, I have my whole video basically edited for me. You can also go in and edit your video like a Word document, which is a lot easier to process versus constantly listening through your video over and over again. And then from there, you can export your video as an MP4 or actually send it out to your editor like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve and then fine tune your edits from there. This tool has honestly saved me hours on each video. And if you want to get started for free, we'll leave a link in the description down below for you to try out Gleam. One thing I like to do after I have a rough cut for my video is as you can see, it can be a little bit confusing as to which part of the video you are in. So if I know, hey, this is talking point one, I can actually create a color and color code my timeline. So one thing you can do is just select the highlighted clips. Let's say this is my talking point one, this section. I can just right click, go to clip color, and I can assign a color, let's say we do orange and I know this section is orange. And so I'll go throughout my entire video and color code to different colors. So that way I know visually where in the video I am at. And this helps you save time knowing where you are in the timeline. Now, right clicking and selecting clip color and assigning a color can be a little bit tedious, but we can actually speed this up by assigning a keyboard shortcut. So I'll show you how to do that. All you gotta do is go up to the top, click DaVinci Resolve, go down to keyboard customization, and then in the search bar, type in clip color, and then right down here, expand this. And here I have certain colors set to a number pad. So you can actually add in any sort of key. I can make this L key, and that will change it to blue. So after you save it, and you can save your own custom keyboard, close that out. And now anytime I press a keyboard key, is going to highlight a certain color. And I have mine set to the number pad, so any clip that I highlight, I just press a number and I get a different color. And this just helps you so much be organized with your timeline. And by assigning it to a number key, just really helps you speed up your workflow even more. All right, so this next keyboard shortcut is an absolute time saver. So here I have a bunch of clips that I shot in the log picture profile. So it's a little bit flatter and it needs to be color graded. But on this first clip, I color graded this through and I like the way it looks. And I want this to be have a similar look throughout the rest of these clips. Well, instead of manually applying a color grade to each individual clip, all you gotta do is select this first clip, press Command C to copy, and then I can highlight the rest of these clips and press Option V. And it's gonna bring up this paste attributes window. And if you go over here to all of the video attributes, it's going to apply everything that you might have modified from that first clip, even the scale, even the position. But since I've only adjusted the color correction, that's the one that only applies. But nonetheless, I can just select apply. And here we go. All these other clips are nice and color graded. I can go in, make some subtle tweaks, but this definitely saves me quite a bit of time instead of manually color grading each clip. Okay, I gotta be honest with you. I'm not a perfect editor. And a lot of times I make mistakes. Shocking, I know. But let's say I really goofed up and I deleted all of these clips. What do I do now? Do I go in and have to find those clips, put them back in, recolor grade? No, all you gotta do is undo your last action by pressing Command Z. Whew, 
All the clips are back exactly how they were right where I had them. Super nice and can definitely save you in a pinch. There's also Command Shift Z if you want to undo your last action. Let's say I really did want to delete all of them. Well, all I gotta do is press that and then Command Z to undo that. Now I know this is a lot to keep track of and if you find a keyboard shortcut that is useful but it feels unnatural or too complicated to remember, the good news is you can actually reprogram any of these keys to perform a function and I'll show you how to do that right now. You wanna go up to the top left and click on DaVinci Resolve. Go down to Keyboard Customization and by default, your keyboard shortcuts will be set to DaVinci Resolve, and that's what I've been using to demonstrate this video. But you can also select Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro if you are coming from those platforms. But you can also make your own custom keyboard. So for example, one of my favorite shortcuts I've actually reprogrammed was that Command Shift bracket where I trimmed everything from the beginning. And to find that, just go underneath the Trim section, and under Ripple, you'll find End to Playhead, and start to playhead. And that's going to trim everything like we showed earlier. I have mine set to Q and E. So Q would trim everything from the beginning and E will cut everything from the end up to that point of my playhead. Now, if you want to reprogram any of your own keyboard shortcuts, let's actually do one right now. I'm going to change the razor tool, which was Command B, and I can make this any keyboard I want. I just click X on that to erase it and then I type in whatever keyboard key I want. So let's do W. It was gonna ask us to assign, and notice that it's actually assigned to dynamic trim mode only. So we might actually have to go in and delete that in order for it to work. Then click save. So now with these changes, if I want to edit a video, I can press the W key to make a cut. I could press the Q button to trim everything up to this playhead or I could press the E to trim all the in to the playhead. And to me, having my fingers rest here is a lot more intuitive and I can edit a lot quicker. So I would highly recommend spending a few extra minutes reprogramming some of your favorite keyboard shortcuts to something that fits your needs and saving those few extra seconds is going to stack up over the course of an edit and multiple edits. So those are 10 and a half great keyboard shortcuts that is going to significantly improve your workflow. Let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite and how it's going to speed up your workflow. And if you wanna learn more about how to make better edits, make them faster, then be sure to check out this video right here.